Hello, lovely people. If you saw the title of this video, you're probably thinking, But Megan, it's not even close to Halloween! Why are you making a video about this crap? Don't be led into a false sense of security. An attack from the supernatural can happen at any time. Even Christmas. It could be the middle of June when this happens. What the heck are you freaking out about? I'm just going to bed. Alright, that's not the perfect example. But what if it had been a demon come to steal your soul instead of a confused family member? What would you have done? What would you have done? If you answered with, I don't know! I don't know! Worry not. My constant reading of folklore and browsing of Wikipedia pages has left me with an extensive knowledge of the creatures of the dark. And I'm here to help you. Your first line of defense, common table salt. This creates a barrier against most ghosts and demons and other ghoulies depending on the legends. Use it on your doorways, your windowsills, and if you're lazier in a pinch, just make a circle around you. You can even make a ring around your entire house if you buy in bulk. We'll call this the safety zone. It's also a good idea to have garlic hanging around. <laughs> Man, I love garlic. You also need to avoid inviting certain people into your safety zone. Hey, uh, how's about you invite me in? Oh sure! Right after I finish putting on my silver jewelry and my garlic perfume. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I I'm, I'm good. I I'll catch up with you later. Also make an effort to stay within your safety zone from about midnight to 5 a.m. At the very least, make sure not to leave your safety zone around 3 a.m. They don't call it the devil's hour, the demon hour, and the witching hour for nothing. Never, ever buy and use a Ouija board, especially within your safety zone. That's basically inviting them in, which I already told you not to do. And do not ever question or challenge a paranormal force's power. Whether you believe in it or not, they will stop at nothing to prove a point. <laughs> Ghosts don't exist. Um, excuse me, but yes, we do. Alright, I'm convinced. And one final piece of preventative advice is to have sturdy doors and good locks. This doesn't necessarily pertain to specifically paranormal things, but it's just common sense. But what do you do if your house is already infested? Know where your exits are and have an evacuation plan. Again, this is just common sense. Sometimes a simple walk through your house with a burning smudge stick will do the trick. Just be careful because you are literally waving burning herbs around your house. Oh, well, my house is on fire, but at least that demon is gone. Oops. <sighs> Some people simply suggest moving out of the house once paranormal stuff begins to happen. In most cases, yes, this is a very, very good idea. But ghosts and demons have been known to latch on to people rather than places, and basically just follow them throughout the rest of their lives. If this is the case, moving isn't gonna do you any good, I'm afraid. So how can you tell the difference between a casual haunting and a supernatural stalker? Simply put, possession. Now, possession doesn't always mean the head spinning and the spewing of green vomit. It usually has to work its way up to that. There's a whole spectrum. But it usually starts with a not-so-imaginary imaginary friend. Oh yes, I like that too. Sweetie, who are you talking to? Abaddon. Aw, you give your imaginary friends the most interesting names. <laughs> Basically, if people and animals start acting weird rather than just inanimate objects, that's when you know you're screwed. This is also probably the time to bring in an expert. So, who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters! No! They haven't been in business for years! Call your local demonologist. And after that, all you can do is hope for the best. I mean, there's no telling what can happen once you have a demon on your hands. And don't film it! You know those people that get really angry with you when you try and take their picture or film them? 
That's what every ghost and demon is like. And you'll just make everything worse. Hmm, why are my keys on the ground? Alright, some malevolent force has just pushed me down the stairs and I've broken both my legs! And now my house is on fire. What a day this has been! Now for the most part I've been talking about ghosts and demons, but my main area of expertise is with vampires. And no, not the ones that sparkle. What is this, 2005? First thing you need to know is that you cannot fully rely on your holy water and crucifixes. Not all vampires are atheists, that's just a stereotype. But most folklore can agree on a few things. A stake through the heart, cutting off their head, and silver. Well, that's a factor too, but the effect it has can vary. Modern folklore has the whole sunlight equals combustion trope. Ow, 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 hot, 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 hot! But believe it or not, original folklore really doesn't have any mention of sunlight having an effect on vampires. Even in Dracula, Bram Stoker's infamous Count can walk around in sunlight. So who really knows? But hopefully you'll find this knowledge helpful when a soul-stealing demon decides to ignore your Do Not Disturb sign. So sleep well, keep a large supply of salt, and I will see you next time. Bye. Oh, and one more thing. Don't trust anybody. Not even me. Ha 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 ha.